I said that Caroline is one of the brightest lights in Westminster. The other bright light is Clive Lewis, the Labour MP for Norwich South, and I'm really glad that Clive is here. Thank you. Thank you. We really appreciate that. Um, and thank you for everyone that's turned up today and all the people that put so much hard work into getting this off the ground. I think when we all walked in this morning, we're all not shocked, but pleasantly surprised by what we've seen. So thank you so much for your time and setting us up. Um, looking at today's agenda, uh, the workshops and the forums on different elements of uh, the key campaign issues that will be coming up today, it's clear that this event isn't just a political rally. It's much, much more than that. I'm staying for most of the day today because I want to keep my eyes open, my ears open, my brain engaged, because I want to arm myself with the best arguments, the best rhetoric, the greatest ability to oppose the arguments of those who believe we should leave the EU. And I urge you all today to make the most of this fantastic event. Now, we all know the Brexiteers aren't a uniform bunch. Some of our comrades on the left want Brexit too. But we all know the main bulk of this debate centres on a neoliberal civil war, a power struggle between the forces of reaction. In the UK, it's being played out within the Tory party. But across Europe, we see the same forces at work as right-wing nationalism rears its head once again. From Front National in France, the Justice Party in Poland, Five Star in Italy, and Jobbik in Hungary. And by the way, Five Star is actually quite a horrific organization, nothing to do with the uh, dance act and sing band from the 1980s. <laughs> now, look, before I'm banned, I'm berated for implying all Brexiteers are racist. I'm clearly not saying that. But history has shown that when the right play with fire, no matter their intention, the forces they unleash mean we all get burnt. That's why I want to focus my talk That's why I wanted to focus my talk today on an issue that has become the elephant in the room of this referendum campaign, that of immigration. It's been touched on by Caroline, I'm sure it'll be touched on by others today. Brexiteers have basically lost the economic arguments. They've retreated to their Alamo last stand position, the issue of immigration. The, ir the irony that they have now resorted to the ultimate project fear position they have so berated, and it's an irony that's lost on them. The fact that they would end up here was never in any doubt. Not to anyone that's watched the general slide of our country's politics into this toxic maelstrom of anti-immigration, anti-Islamophobia and fear, the closer the referendum has come. If, like me, you've knocked on doors seeking votes these past few years, you'll know that A, in some of the most deprived communities, it's a topic guaranteed to come up on the doorstep, and B, it's one of the most difficult issues for the left and progressives generally to counter in a meaningful way that can cut through. What I do know is that countering their facts with your facts, by and large, don't cut it. But it's critical that we have an underpinning of the key arguments on why they're so wrong. A couple of days ago, I watched Theresa Villiers, MP Theresa Villiers, Tory MP, uh, on Newsnight, and she's for, on the committee for the Leave campaign. And she came up with three key arguments um, about why they wanted to leave. The first around immigration. The first is that leaving the EU will mean getting immigration under 100,000 people a year. But here's the catch. When pressed, they admit they wouldn't rule out, should the economy need it, an increase in the number of people they would allow into the country. Making a mockery of the claim that we're full up and expo exposing the immigration argument for what it is a xenophobic political tool to enable the UK to opt out of even the most modest social and environmental protections that the EU offers. That's what it's about. <clears throat> the second line of attack used by Theresa Villiers was a classic to blame immigration for, ba for failing public services, a lack of housing and suppressing pay. What? Eh? What? I mean, we've heard it before. Public services, EU immigrants, EU migrants to the UK make a net contribution of £22 billion to our economy in the last 10 years. They've strengthened our economy, not weakened it. But if looking for a blame game, then blame the banking and financial sector, the system whose own greed and subsequent... 
whose greed and subsequent public bailout has been at the cost of our decent public services. Housing. Don't blame immigrants. Blame a Tory government that forced the setting off of council homes and never allowed them to be replaced. If you want to blame people for housing, not immigrants. And pay. They said that pay was being suppressed by immigration. The fifth richest economy in the world, where the top 1% have just, where the top 1%, top fifth, bottom 50%, sorry, shared just 6% of the proceeds of the last decades of growth, while the top 1% shared 26%. Where even the IMF concedes that the draconian anti-trade union laws in place in this country have been the main cause of low pay and, and, and low demand in our country. Her last argument, though, was perhaps the most powerful, the fact that Brexit would enhance democratic decision-making. Two things here. One, the EU is in dire need of a democratic overhaul. It's our government that has been blocking radical, thank you very much, radical EU parliamentary plans for an overhaul to tax avoidance and evasion. Our government that blocked an EU-wide harmonisation of corporation tax. Democracy must improve in Europe. It must change. But their way isn't the way that we need to follow. But this is the best line I've heard today. If the EU didn't exist, we would have to invent it. That came from this man sat here, I believe. Sovereignty left these shores a long time ago. With the advent of globalization, the rise of the mega corporations, only through better cooperation and international governance do we stand a chance of tackling the threats that humanity will face in the coming century. The British public know, the British public understand that the arguments that are being made at the moment do not resonate, do not make sense. They understand that this is an argument inherently in between the Tory party and itself. What they also understand is that if the Labour Party and if the left of this country want to defend Europe using more neoliberal arguments, then ultimately they will not cut through. The British, the British public know that this doesn't make sense. We cannot win this campaign based on half-truths like this, just as we can't win on arguments based on fear. Hence, this is an opportunity to make our case, a positive case for a fairer, more ethical and sustainable economy that benefits the many and not just the few. It's time to join with our brothers and sisters across Europe who share our passion for a different vision for Europe, to make the case for a social Europe, a compassionate Europe, a sustainable Europe, a better Europe. That's our challenge this next month. Let's get to it.